Welcome to Syncreate, a show where we explore the intersections between creativity, psychology, and spirituality. Our goal is to demystify the creative process and expand the boundaries of what it means to be creative. I'm Melinda Rothhaus, and I help individuals and organizations bring their creative dreams and visions to life. Hi, and I'm Charlotte Gullick, and I am a writer, educator, and editor, and I co-create many things with Melinda. Hey, everyone. So for our mini episode, Creative Spark, for today, we're going to be talking about creativity and discipline. But Woo-hoo! discipline in a in a wonderful, joyous kind of way. And since we're starting off the year with these mini episodes, we're just going to put it out there and we'll return to this at the end. But to really think about, you know, what do you want from your own creative process or your own creative work for this year? And anytime we set a goal like that, there's going to have to be planning involved, right? So. Absolutely. Um, and I'm thinking about how how do I want to feel at the end of 2024? And I want to set a goal or goals that feel realistic to my life that has a lot of demands. Yeah. I want to be, I want to feel really good about what it is that I lay out in front of myself. And so I think modest goals are realistic goals. Um, and you can always overachieve. Um, but <laughs> yeah. I, I like, um thinking about that and that the if we if, if we start now if we start January 1 where could we be at the end of 2024 in terms of closing the gap between where we are with our creativity and where we want to be and hopefully that where we want to be is some where there's more joy there's more connection maybe you've pulled in some accountability partners maybe you've found ways to connect to creative community and the byproduct is a honed craft Yes. Um, we are starting to think about the connections we can have as a result of discipline. Yeah. And I, I love what you said. You know, that's one thing about coaching. Before I became a coach, I was a client. And what I loved about it, being a good student and kind of an overachiever, is that, you know, if I had some assignments and I knew I was going to meet with my coach, then, well, I better go ahead and do them, even if it's at the last minute. But one thing I learned from that experience is that the point of having a goal is that you have something to be aspiring toward. And even if you don't hit the goal, you've probably come further than you would have if you hadn't set the goal. And maybe you surpass it, or maybe you do come right up to the mark. But having a goal is a wonderful motivator, just like having a deadline is a wonderful motivator. If I have a gig coming up, you bet I'm going to be practicing. If I don't, well, I might slack off a little bit. But, you know, that's that's a real benefit of having these kinds of goals or intentions or whatever you might want to call them. I also think about how football has that big old goalpost. Yes. And it's a pretty wide yes. opportunity to score. Yes. And so I think you can say, I'm going to write 100,000 words this year, which is a lot. Or you can say, I'm going to write 40,000. And, you know, even if you get somewhere in between, that's that's a win. Um, I, I also really want to, you know, strike a note about or highlight the importance of muscle memory and that it's not just our brains involved in the creative process. It is our bodies. Yes. And uh, if our body gets used to, oh, this is what I do at this time. We've talked about this before, but like that it's actually easier and it's actually for our bodies. Um, it's easier for our bodies to trust us that we're going to show up regularly. Yeah. That's why they say it takes at least six weeks or however long to form a new habit because it has to get into our body. Right. Yes. And I think that we have, I don't know about most people, but for me, I have kind of a incorrect definition of what discipline is. It really means to teach and to educate. I learned this from uh, Daniel Siegel and mm. Mindsight uh-huh. that like for me, discipline was punishment, but mm. really it's about how to instruct. Yeah. And I think that's if we can take that definition of to instruct um, and to kind of show the way then discipline is can be so fantastic in helping us learn our own best practices. Yeah, and sometimes it's just about having a structure, you know, that we can trust 
you know, trust into this structure, this routine, this habit that we've developed for ourselves. And I think also um, figuring out the definition of your medium. So like for me, since I'm a writer, there's a huge umbrella called writing. And then there's pre-writing, there's drawing or clustering or seeing what's there. Mm -hmm. There's research, there's reading, there's um, follow, doing like um, the entomological uh, r roots of a word. Like the, what it means to write has, it's a why etymological i did it i did it wrong <laughs> yeah you gotta look up the bugs look of up the those word. insects <laughs> Dang it. i love it i love it <laughs> oh my gosh I, this is so one of the because I, I can't hear differences of words yeah so I'll just yeah go off topic a little bit it's so, great uh, for a long time i didn't uh, couldn't hear the difference between antidote an anecdote. Ah. But now I've decided that's a good thing because a good story can save your life. That's right. And I thought you were going to say antelope too. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, just antidote and anecdote. Um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, entomology. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Etymology. Yes. That's what I'm trying to say. So you could have your medium and like, what if it's dancing? Maybe that's watching film. Maybe that's going to a yoga class. Maybe there's all these different ways. Um, and I think part of for, for me with Syncrate is like busting open the definition of what it means to be creative. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's something I think we've really been exploring in the show, talking to this wide range of people working in all these different mediums and contexts that, you know, creativity can look so many different ways ways and we all have access to that. And we're all just using it you know, every day just to get through life. Absolutely. Pretty yeah. much, right? So I was going to say, if folks are looking to be creative, that every, um, almost every chapter that we have in our book has a creative spark, which is just um, a little prompt because sometimes we sit down and we're like, oh, I want to be creative, but I don't know what to do. And I love um, prompts, one, to get me where I want to go, but also what if I don't want to do it? It gives me something to resist. Um, and I think that's also being in collaboration with what's around us. Yeah. Say more about the resistance real quick. Oh, oh so let's say, you know, um, I do this a lot with clients. And I'm like, well, what if the character does this or this or this? And they're like, no, they would never do that. I'm like, oh, so you know them better than you think uh -huh. you do. Yeah. So like, or, and, you know, today I'm supposed to do whispers of the creative mind. Well, I don't want to. So I'm in a woodshed. Like, I, yeah, there's, you've got there's options. Kind of a, it, <laughs> Something to push against can sometimes help me define what it is that I want to do. Yes, yes. Just knowing what we don't want to do, what road we don't want to take can help clarify where do we want to go. Yeah. Great. So for our creativity pro tip today, we really encourage you to think about where you want to be at the end of this year with your own creativity. There are so many ways that you can do this, but one that I use is I try to write 30 day, I mean, 30 minutes every day. And I have an app called Don't Break the Chain. And um, things have been a little bit stressful the last couple of days. So I gave myself some slack. So I didn't write a half an hour yesterday. So I wrote an hour today. Good. Um, and I, my little, when I get to 100, I get a massage. Awesome. That's a great example. So at Syncreate, we're here to support your creative endeavors. So if you have an idea for a project or a new venture, please reach out to us for one-on-one -on -one coaching or join our Syncreate 2024 coaching group. Which we're really excited to be offering. This will be a small group of folks who see, um, they identify a project and take it through its process. And we meet regularly to check in and be inspired. Yeah, so we'll be walking you through the model that we've been talking about in these mini sessions of play, plan, and produce. So you can find more on our website, syncreate.org. Um, where you can also find all of our podcast episodes. We're on social media as well under Syncreate, and we are on YouTube. We are releasing our episodes both in audio and video on YouTube. So find us and connect. Um, 
And we are recording today at Record ATX Studios in Austin and with Charlotte in the Hudson Valley. I'm so glad to have you with me on this new endeavor of our Creative Spark episodes. And um, the podcast is produced in collaboration with Mike Osborne at 14th Street Studios. So thanks so much for being with us, and we'll see you next time.